Hello everyone, so today LEGO revealed the official photos and description, finally, for the large Cloud City set. They call it Betrayal at Cloud City. This set has been rumored for months and months and months now, and finally the cat is fully out of the bag. And I did a quick overview video going through all of the features that are shown in the official photos. I did that over on my quick, kind of short form channel. If you haven't seen that, I'll link directly to that video. It's only about three and a half minutes to go through everything, so very easy to, to get through even if you're uh, kind of under a time crunch. I'll link to that from the pinned comment, from a card in this video, and also from the end screen. And if you want to see more of those short form videos of upcoming large sets, as well as just the short form versions of my longer reviews. Check out my quicker version channel and feel free to subscribe over there. But for this channel here, I wanted to take this opportunity to share just my, mostly my subjective opinions based on what I've seen here for this set for right now. First of all, my very first impression based on seeing this photo right here was not particularly positive. Uh, just kind of stepping back from this, not looking at the details, just the, that initial impression is not good. Uh, for me, it just doesn't look interesting to me. It doesn't look good. Uh, it doesn't look like something that I would want to display. You know, it doesn't have the, even the, the full round shape, much less the covering over it. It doesn't really represent Cloud City to me. But then again, of course, neither did the original uh, Cloud City set that LEGO did years back, but that one actually uh, felt a little bit more displayable because of its more rectangular, linear, vignette series uh, sort of design. But looking at this more closely, looking at each of the scenes that are, that are presented here, I feel like each one is actually done very well uh, in and of itself. And I think that they make very good use of the space here. They set the scenes, they set the moods for each of the areas very well. Uh, they leave enough room for, it looks like, your hands to get in there and place figures. It looks like there's enough room to place figures, uh, multiple figures, more than you need for a given scene in each of these areas. I feel like the detailing is good. And I especially like, <laughs> I especially like actually, to be honest, the, the dining room, uh, as little screen time as it got. Uh, I feel like uh, that is just captured here pretty well and, uh, you know, that's again a good use of the space. I also very much like the top of the platform around the carbon freezing chamber here. It's just very complete. Uh, there's not a lot of gapping there and, again, there's plenty of room to place figures around it. It looks like they're probably going to have another good uh, transformation feature to let you make Han Solo go down and then the Carbonite block come up. And then my least favorite part of this is definitely this landing pad, but I mean, what more could they have done with that? It's going to look much better when you put the Slave 1 on top of it. Uh, the, the section for the duel with Vader I think looks really good at the end. Fantastic, actually, uh, out at the end, right where it, where it ends. But the whole thing you know, the whole scene takes place on this huge, huge wind vane, and that whole idea, the, the context for where this is, is not captured at all. That's okay. I, I kind of wish that there was more grand scale in this, given its large size overall and, you know, its high price, but honestly, the price to part ratio does look pretty reasonable, all things considered. I really can't complain about that in terms of the objective value on that measure. Uh, the overall size of it, we'll have to see what this really looks like, what it really feels like in person uh, for me to really judge the the volume of stuff, you know, the price to volume of stuff ratio for it. I mentioned the Slave 1, and this is actually another of my favorite pieces of this set, favorite components of this set. And this is probably not going to be a popular opinion at all, but I feel like LEGO needs to make more things at this scale because... I mean, this is a good representation. All the, sh the shaping, the proportions, I think, is, is good for a Slave 1, but it's sized down as far as they could while still allowing a figure to sit in it. And I think that's a really good idea if they would make more sets like this as standalones where they just, 
you know, went ahead and reduced things down, get that cost down, you know, just the retail price, you know, price to part ratio, that's great and all, but when a single vehicle that's not even that important costs a hundred dollars on the market or something, not saying that the slave one is, is one of those, it's not important, but you know, there are a lot of things out there that are in the, the 70, 80, hundred dollar range uh, for just normal stuff. And I feel like a move towards a smaller scale in general for minifig toys in the, the regular Lego line would be a very good idea at this point. Uh, similarly, they've, they've done a similar thing with the Twin Pod Cloud Car here. You know, it's as small as it can be to still fit two figures in there. And I even want to fit a figure in either pod fully enclosed. That's really good design work there. And, and it looks like the, the cockpits will open up at least in two directions to give you plenty of room to fit those figures in there. The cloud car is red. Again, they, they looks like they brought in some dark orange, also some brown, maybe some dark brown on the underside. looks like possibly uh, you know, in, in the movie, these things are supposed to be kind of a, something in between a, an orange and a, and a brick red color. Uh, I don't think that a bright orange is right, honestly, uh, in, in Lego. Maybe a combination between their regular orange color and dark orange. Certainly they don't have all the pieces they need to do the whole thing in dark orange, so they had to make some decisions based on that. Probably didn't have the budget available to order up recolors of a whole lot of parts to, to do this right. So I think personally it's passable. Looking at the figures, sure, you get Han Solo, you get Han Solo, you get another Hoth, Leia. This new Leia, this new Bespin Leia, actually looks really good. And this has print on the on the, the back of the dress part as well. I think this is just just very well done. This this is a good one to add to you know the the body of work from from Lego and figures that are collectible. This Lando I think is really good. The torso print is good. I like how the face is similar enough to that original, you know, that classic original Lando face, but it's still modernized. And then they have the alternate face as well with the the smile. And it feels like this is a very strong Legoification of that character. It almost feels a little bit, a little bit less like Billy D. Williams, a little bit more like the the uh, cartoon version, the animated version of this character that that Lego has has done in their you know their spinoffs and their non canonical stuff, which I think is is fine. But I love that cape too. It's not it doesn't just have two colors on it. Uh, it has the print on the inside as well. And I never even realized in the movie that there was print on the inside of his cape. You know that pattern. Chewbacca, yep, Bespin Luke, I like the alternate face for him for when he's at the end, although uh, the hair is a little bit bushy for that point, but it's, it's nitpicking. The droids, sure, C-3PO, R2-D2, we get them all the time. I wish they had also included an E-3PO. Lobot, um, I don't know. I don't think that face captures Lobot's face, that actor's face from the movie uh, all that well. Only one Ugnaught. This set needed at least two Ugnaughts. It needed at least two Ugnaughts. Come on, they're the smallest ones, and, and you've already made the mold. Just uh, just include one more. That 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 hurts me personally. They need <laughs> these. Uh, it it it's a strange thing for me to kind of harp on, but I personally, as a Star Wars fan and as someone who has had Star Wars toys for a lot of years and someone who's been a fan of Star Wars for decades, I want there to be two Ugnaughts in this set. Because you need Ugnaughts for the the incinerator room set, and you need Ugnaughts, plural, for the, uh, the freezing chamber, you know, the carbonite freezing chamber scene. Two Bespin guards. Okay, that's good. You know, with distinctly different faces. Two cloud car pilots. These look great. Good looking helmets, good looking torso prints, and I believe that each of these comes with a double sided face if I'm not mistaken. So they'll just be two identical figures and you can just swap the face around of one of them to make them look uh, uh, different. Darth Vader, of course. I think the modern Vaders are good, except, you know, the, the mask does kind of look like he's looking up all the time when you view it from the side. Another excellent 
uh, inclusion of, of a Boba Fett here with the printing on the arms as well and no longer feel special or once I get this I will no longer feel special for having the UCS you know the original UCS release of Boba Fett but that's that's all good it, the more of these really well detailed Boba Fett's they can get out on the market I think the better uh, for collectors and for kids as well it's just really high quality stuff and I'm glad to have figures that are this good on on the market for everybody IG-88 cool I like I like the IG's and then two stormtroopers. I think that's fine. You can always go for more stormtroopers, but at least including two, that's kind of the minimum. So for me personally, thinking just selfishly as an adult collector, this set is not designed correctly. It's not designed right for me. I like each of these scenes. I wish they had been arranged in a way that I could uh, you know, maybe pull them apart and line them up on a shelf or two because it's a lot of stuff, and, you know, be able to see everything at once. As it is, if I put this on a shelf, well, half of it's going to stick out and it's going to fall on the floor. <laughs> it's not really designed to fit on a shelf, is it? It can fit on a, a table. It's going to take up a lot of space on the table. It's not for me. It's not for me as a collector. It's not for me as, as an adult fan to keep together. You know, I will be keeping... I'll be enjoying the figures. I'll be enjoying... The side builds, uh, possibly I'll find a way to keep a couple of these scenes on display individually, but uh, it's, it's just mostly not for me. I personally would have wanted to see a full Cloud City model, complete with you know covered, coverage on the outside, uh, an opening kind of upper saucer section to reveal just a few scenes, a few key scenes would have been great, but I know that would have been much more expensive than this uh, and and or would have had so little interior detail that it almost would have been would not have been worth it uh, would have been something designed kind of like the uh, the super star destroyer where you know you can open it up and you have interior detail for just the bridge you know that's about the most you can do within this kind of uh, this kind of scale and this kind of price range so yeah, personally, I, I don't think it's great for me and for people in similar situations to me. Uh, for kids, uh, kids of rich parents who can, you know, just toss this huge amount of money at them, uh, I think it's actually pretty good, to be honest. I think this is designed pretty well. No, I think this is designed very well as a playset. Now, just kind of rolling my mind back to the mindset of when I was a child and and playing with toys and, and wanted to play with with Star Wars uh, toys uh, this would have been great for me so as a toy as a play set uh, as something that is not marketed as a UCS as a collector set I think that this is successful and for everybody else well if you don't like it you don't have to buy it I'll be buying it to do the review for all of you I will do a long form review on this channel of course and I will also do a quick review on the quick channel but, you know, rather than showing the photos, once I have it in person, I'll show it in person there. I'll just do it, you know, in a, a short form. That's it for my thoughts for now. I think I've covered everything that I wanted to say about this. Maybe a little bit more. Again, one last small plug for the other channel. If you want to see the quick overview of all the, the major photos and all of the major features in about three and a half minutes, you can check that out. I've linked to it all over this video. And subscribe to that channel if you want to see more stuff like that, because I'm not going to put stuff like that over on this channel here. It'll become a little bit, a little bit muddy, I think, and a little bit disruptive. Thanks for your time. Hope you enjoyed this. I will talk to you again as soon as I can, which will be, in fact, quite soon. Bye for now.